This journey is nearing its end. We uh, Starting 99 days before the college football season, we vowed to ask a question to help us get ready for college football all the way up until opening kick on the college football season. That opening kick is in Ireland tomorrow between Florida State, sorry, not tomorrow, Saturday, between Florida State and Georgia Tech, and that means we only have today and tomorrow for our final questions. Don't cry because it's over. Smile because it happened. No, smile because it's and over. smile because college football, <laughs> it means college football is back now that 99 questions is over with. Smile because it's over because we finally got to where we were trying to go. Who's got uh, onions? The question for today is who will win the Heisman? Ooh. Who will win the Heisman Trophy? Who will be the best player in college football this year? I'll give you the background. Uh, betting favorites as they stand right now, and this has actually shifted a few times uh, during the offseason. Dylan Gabriel of Oregon, uh, transfer quarterback out of Oklahoma, prior to that UCF. Uh, Carson Beck, Georgia, starting quarterback last season. Georgia's the national championship favorite. Uh, Quinn Ewers of Texas. Those are the one, two, and three betting favorites. Uh, if you want to take a, a background a little bit further, uh the favorite in the ACC, the highest betting favorite uh, from the Atlantic Coast Conference, is Cam Ward, quarterback of the Miami Hurricanes. He is the eighth betting favorite. Uh, the triangle favorite, I'm calling it the highest, uh, the best odds to win based on Vegas uh, for anyone from the three schools in the triangle, is Grayson McCall, quarterback NC State. He has the 35th best odds. Thirty, He's the 35th betting favorite overall. Uh, and I don't know if this counts, but Riley Leonard, the old quarterback from Duke, is the 17th betting favorite. So if he were still at Duke, although Notre Dame probably boosted a little bit, uh, he may be ahead of Grayson McCall. Here's the crazy part, okay? And I'm going to I'm gonna explain to you my thought process before giving you uh, my pick. It's all quarterbacks? My pick is not a quarterback. Uh, that's a tease right there, right? That everybody, is a everybody tease. Everybody just perked up. Uh, the last five winners are Jaden Daniels, Caleb Williams, Bryce Young, Devontae Smith, Joe Burrow. Those are the last five winners. You may look at those and go, oh, of course, they're all great. Well, yeah, now that they're in the NFL, they're, they're making big money. They were first overall picks in, in a lot of cases. Uh, we can look at them that way. But before their Heisman year, Jaden Daniels, Devontae Smith, and Joe Burrow were not really on the radar for the Heisman. No. Right, they were they, in in Jaden Daniels and and Joe Burrow's case, they were both starting quarterbacks at Alabama, or sorry, at LSU. Devontae Smith was a starting wide receiver for Alabama, but they were not like the the hot pick. Right, in many cases, they were just seen as like run of the mill starters. Bryce Young and Caleb Williams, while more highly touted, uh, were either starting for the first time or starting at a new school for the first time. Yeah. Bryce Young was taken over for Mac Jones. Uh, Caleb Williams was transferring from Oklahoma to USC. So it, it they weren't set up. It's like you know, I, I think a lot of people go to Carson Beck at Georgia and say that's got to be the, the the obvious choice. Yeah, but I'm going. There really hasn't been a situation where there was like a returning expected Heisman candidate from the national championship favorite who went on to win. Most of the time, they come from somewhere you don't expect. Now I want to be clear on this. I'm buying into the hype of the player. Not the team he plays for. My pick is Travis Hunter. The wide receiver slash defensive back from Colorado. I'm not bought in at all to the Colorado hype machine. Okay, I, I do not think the way... Dion runs a program with with fear. It, you know, hey, if, if you don't play exactly, do exactly what I want, you're cut. Right? And we'll, we'll bring in a transfer around you. I don't like the way that he... he you know, puts obviously his sons and Travis Hunter on some pedestal above the rest of the team. I don't know if they're going to be the best program, is what I'm saying. But I am fully bought in to Colorado and Deion Sanders featuring Travis Hunter at all costs. I think they are going to guarantee him if he plays in all 12 games. He played in nine last year. 1,200 yards receiving, and I think they are going to, obviously, he'll be playing every defensive snap. He might be a top five pick at corner. If he walks away with 1,200 yards receiving and seven picks or five picks or just is a known as a shutdown corner that no one wants to test, it's the Shohei thing where it's just like, well, you can't compare him to anyone else. And every time you try to, the response is just too easy. 
right? Oh, Carson Beck is great. Yeah, but this guy plays defense. Mike Trout is great. Yeah, but Shohei also pitches. It's it's really just because Colorado is willing to feature him on both sides of the ball and is is going to force him into the spotlight, I don't see how you could craft – if he plays all 12 games, right? He only played nine last year. The argument is going to be unbelievable. I mean uh- – Go ahead. I was going to say, you're absolutely right. They're going to do everything they can to make him the poster child of that program. The only thing is for Colorado, full pictures, can they stay relevant enough this college football season for him to stay in contention? I think that if they're obviously bowl eligible, seven, eight wins, I think that's all it's going to take for him to then – I mean, remember, LSU wasn't some kind of juggernaut last year, and, and Jaden Daniels won. Um, I think more and more and more and more the voters are willing to look at the, uh, the statistics and let the metrics make their – their decision over the best player on the best team. Travis Hunter. That's my pick. Do you have one? Do you want to throw a name out there? Anyone I haven't mentioned? Nationally, no, but just okay. locally, and the, kind of going back to what I just said, it's going to be hard for him to really stay in the run just because it feels like it's a quarterback heavy mm-hmm. favorites to win every season. But if, if, North Carolina can do some things this year. I, I, I would like to see Omarion Hampton in there. And I feel like he did enough last year as far as stats, numbers, yep. touchdowns to put himself in the conversation. It's just Carolina fell off at the end, and that's what kind of hurt him. I think he needs more touchdowns. And that, he was playing behind Drake May, too. For, for a running back to be in the mix, I think there has to be records at stake. Yeah. I think you have to – I mean, and, and the records are so outlandish. You look at some of the stuff like Barry Sanders did in college. Like, it's it's unreal. But maybe a touchdown record, something, some kind of of record has to be on the line. I think for a running back to win at this point in in the college football evolution. 